What is your builder or architect going to do to optimize for passive solar gain? Hey everyone, I'm on site here today at Casa Verde, Lethbridge County's first net zero home. And today I'm gonna to be discussing one of the fundamentals of building a home, and that is the site and the home's orientation. Now this is much more important than many builders seem to consider, so let's get into it. Passive solar design is gonna do two big things for you. It's gonna help you heat your home for the 10 months of the year that we're trying to do that, and it's also gonna greatly help you with daylighting. It's just gonna let that natural light flood into your home. More than 60% of the energy homes in Canada used is used to heat and cool the space. So that's why greener homes Passive solar design is one of the first things we consider when we're building a new home or even retrofitting an existing one. Now there are some other great ways to reduce the energy demand in your home through insulation and air sealing, but we'll save that for another video. For now, let's just focus on this. We all know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, but what you might not know is that in our part of the world, the sun takes a path that kind of leans towards the south. So basically, the sun is always shining down from the south, whether it's the southeast, the south, or the southwest. And what this means is that south is the optimal direction for your glazing to face. And the same can be said for your roof pitches if you ever want to install solar photovoltaic panels on your roof. Or if you want to ground mount your solar, south is still your best option. With solar, east and west also work pretty good because the sun is hitting that in the morning and hitting it in the afternoon. But when it comes to your glazing, you gotta be weary with those east and west windows because they can actually often result in the overheating of your home during the summer. Now, there are ways to mitigate that and we'll get to it. So we've talked about the south, the west and the east. Now let's talk about the north side. North facing windows are gonna be nothing but trouble. They should be avoided or minimized if possible. And the reason being is that if windows aren't letting sun and heat in, all they're gonna be doing is letting heat out. And we know that in the, our part of the world, the north side of the home isn't gonna get any sun at all. So even though windows facing west or east may be prone to overheating during the summer, it's important that those windows are getting sun exposure during the winter. And that's because our days are obviously shorter and we really needed to rely on that sun to help us keep our homes warm. Yet it's not as simple as simply facing your glazing south and avoiding windows on the north to really knock this passive solar design thing out of the park. There are definitely some things we need to look out for. We need to put the correct windows in, they need to be positioned correctly, we need the correct overhangs, and we need the correct shading. So there are all these different things that come into play to really make this work. And with some sites and different home designs, it really can be a challenge. But there are some things we can do. In order to control sun exposure during the summer, you can rely on overhangs and sunscreens to make sure you're getting enough exposure, but not too much. You don't want these overhangs and sunscreens to interfere with that winter exposure. One great way to provide shade in the summer and expose your windows in the winter is to plant deciduous trees near your home. Now what's gonna happen is these trees are gonna flourish during the summer, their leaves will just be blooming, and it's gonna provide those windows shade so they don't overheat. But in the winter, these leaves are gonna die and they're gonna let that sun just shine right on through. Now this works really good for east and west facing windows. As for overhangs, like the one this roof provides, these work great year round because in the summer when the sun is shining down from high, it's gonna provide those upper windows with shade. But in the winter, when the sun is shining from a lower angle, all of those windows are gonna be exposed. Let's talk about this home in a little more detail now. With this home, we were able to orientate the majority of the glazing to the south and we were able to avoid putting any large windows on the north side at all. One thing you may have noticed about Casa Verde is that there are no overhangs on the lower windows. Now the client is still considering putting some in, 
but they're just waiting to find that perfect design that really complements the home first. In the meantime, if they are getting too much sun exposure and they feel like things are warming up a little bit too much inside the home, they said they don't mind opening the windows to let that heat out because they got it for free anyway. The site that this multiple award-winning home is sitting on is nearly perfect for passive solar design. As you can see behind me to the south, there are no big trees or buildings and they don't have to worry about their neighbor building a bigger house than them and decreasing their exposure. Now if you're building in the city, whether it's an infill or in a new community, don't hold your breath on finding the perfect lot. But I guarantee you there are great lots that will work for this. At Greener Homes, we rely heavily on our suppliers, energy advisors, and digital programming to know how well a home is going to perform in regards to passive solar design before we even break ground. So don't lose hope. You just have to be flexible and creative and we can make this passive solar design work for you. Now as we're wrapping up, I just wanna mention that shading your windows from the inside is not the same as shading your windows from the outside and don't let your builder tell you any different. So what can happen is you're giving heat a chance to be trapped between your window and your interior blinds and it's gonna get hot in there. And you can very well blow the seals in your windows which is gonna cause issues with air leakage and condensation. It's very important, don't forget. We hope you're armed with the knowledge and information you need to ask your builder about passive solar design. Now, if I'm being totally honest about passive solar design, it's not at all innovative. In fact, people have been incorporating this into buildings for thousands of years. They may not have had windows like you see today, but they still oriented their buildings to optimize for daylighting and for thermal massing. And the reason it's not that popular anymore was because of the advent of cheap natural gas. Suddenly, people could heat their homes for cheap, but it's not as much the case anymore. We all know the price of natural gas is volatile, and the trend is that it's rising in cost. So now, people are finally coming full circle and beginning to see the value and the benefit in heating their homes for free. It's also worth mentioning now, kind of as an afterthought, that there are different types of windows you need to put in different faces of your house. So the windows that go in the south face should not be the same as the windows that go on the north face. Different windows do different jobs, and we hope your builder knows that. If you enjoyed this video, like it and share it. If you have any questions for us, contact us. The link is in the description. And if you want to see more content like this or want more information on important building topics you need to ask your builder about, then hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.